What is going on YouTube? Lamont at large on a brisk afternoon here in Old Orchard Beach, just right outside of Portland, Maine. We're gonna talk about the Bullduck family murders. Definitely is the time of the season where the amusement park and all outside activities here in Maine come to a close. So we're going to talk about the Bulldog family murders. So let's paint a picture. Uh, you had the Bulldog family. You had Christopher Bulldog, 42 years old. His wife, Carol Bulldog, also 42. And then Carol had two sons, Matthew Cushing, who was 21 at the time, and Joshua Bulldog, who was 15. Now, Matthew had a different father than Joshua, but Christopher basically raised him from when he was a young kid. So the Bulldog family, they had a business here on this uh, block right here called Blustery Flags. I'm imagining they, they sold flags uh, in this establishment and I'm imagining it was uh, tourist driven. So at the time of the murders, Matthew was going to school about two hours away, I believe at the University of Maine, he was studying European history. That was going to be his major. When Matthew was a teenager, uh, as a foreign exchange student, uh, he had took a trip down to Ghana. And it really changed his perspective about the world. And he admired Nelson Mandela because, of course, uh, Nelson Mandela being a hero to millions of people after being freed from prison for all those years. And born out of that was a desire to travel. If you talk to Matthew's friends and family, they would say that he was a very loving and caring son. Uh, he loved his dog. He loved his brother. Nothing out of the ordinary that would make somebody think like, okay, this guy is capable of committing an absolutely atrocious crime, uh, but that is what he did. So going into the end of 2007, 2008 years, uh, Matthew seemed to grow somewhat disinterested in school. Uh, he had told his friends that he really, really wanted to visit a friend of his that lived in the United Kingdom, I believe in London, and that he wanted to take a trip backpacking across Europe. That's a dream that many, many a young kids out there would love to do. Maybe someday I'll do the same. The only problem is he didn't want to pay for it. He expects his family to just go ahead and send him a check for $5,000 so he could just kind of gallivant across Europe and have no responsibilities. So the relationship between Matthew and his mother, Carol, and his stepfather, Christopher, I guess reached a boiling point. Now there is no record of any kind of domestic situations occurring at the Bulldogs house. They were a big part of the community here uh, in uh, Portland. So this crime actually absolutely came as a absolute shock to everybody around. Nobody would have ever thought that this crime would have occurred, especially from this guy, Matthew Cushing. On February 20th of 2008, it was a day just like any other day. Now, of course, it would have been very, very cold here in Portland, Maine, and all of those businesses that I showed you down the street, they would have all been closed. They're all closed for the winter. But you got some shops around in this area on this stretch of Old Orchard Beach that remain open because tourists still come. They still want to come see the water. They still want to, you know, come for the, uh, the sites and attractions that Portland has to offer. So on that day, Carol leaves the business at around two o'clock or so. And she goes home to, you know, see how her son is doing, Joshua, and just take care of family matters at the house. 
On her way home, she calls Christopher back at the house, excuse me, at the business right here, and says, hey, I just seen Matthew's car by the dog park. Now, why would she call her husband just to say that her son, or she seen her son's car at the dog park? Well, that leads me to believe that there was some major contention in this family household. So he puts the phone down and tells his employee that Carol just told him that they seen Matthew's car, which is really weird because Matthew lives on an apartment by the University of Maine campus, which is about two hours, I believe, north of here. And they thought that was very odd that he was down here. So after he hangs up with his wife, he tells the employee, he said, hey, uh, if I don't hear back from her within one hour, I'm gonna go over there and see what's going on. This is the site of where the Bullduck family business used to be. Blustery flags. And now it looks like it is uh, some form of a nutrition protein shake shop. Uh, this place, these businesses all around here, uh, oftentimes, you know, because it's a very difficult business when where your business is located is predicated on a uh, very uh, seasonal uh, tourist area where, you know, they come in short waves and then you're done for the next five months. And this place has gone over through uh, quite a few different owners. Uh, it was a coffee shop. Uh, it was a cookie shop. I mean, I, people come, people go. But this is where they were uh, back in 2008. And this is where they had built their family business. And it was a very successful business. So as Christopher Bullduck is driving home about a mile down that very road, from his business, he has no idea that his son and wife are already dead. And he too soon will also meet that dreaded fate. Earlier, a couple hours before, Matthew had came home. Apparently he had a key, let himself in, and he had a plan. He had a plan on murdering his brother, his mother and his stepfather. When Joshua came home from school, apparently it seems like they might have gotten into some kind of argument. Matthew pulls out a stun gun and zaps Joshua. He falls to the ground and immediately Matthew starts stabbing him in the face, kills him, waits for his mother to come home. And as I said earlier, Carol had called the store and said, hey, I see Matthew's car. And as she went home, he did the same to her. Sneaks up behind his mother, zaps her with the stun gun, and then starts stabbing her multiple times. Everywhere, body, face, everywhere. And now all he has to do is wait for his stepdad. The stepdad, the man that who raised him, raised him to, you know, be a man, you know, helped him go through school, just reared him. And why does he do this? Why is he doing this? There's many theories going on about why he committed these murders. One theory is that he got mad at them because they would not pay for his backpacking trip. Another theory goes as follows. It appears that Christopher and Carol were set for a divorce because Christopher had came out of the closet, so to speak, to Carol and admitted that he was gay and that he wanted to move down to South Carolina to be with his lover. Uh, the prosecutor during the case did admit that they did ask Matthew during the uh, interviews uh, what he felt about that. And he said that he didn't like it, that he didn't like homosexuals and that he felt that if they were to get a divorce, that he wouldn't know how his mother could go on. 
uh, how his mother could go on, you know, the man of the house, so to speak, their father just leaving their mother and uh, running off with his lover. And as Christopher came through the door, he st stuns him with the stun gun. He falls to the floor. And proceeds to stab him multiple times. This guy was so vicious in this murder, he, he even killed the family dog. And after he murdered all three family members, he starts pouring gasoline all over the house, lights it on fire, jumps into his mother's Toyota 4Runner, drives to the dog park where his car is parked, and proceeds to make a two-hour drive back to his home. Uh, this is the site where the Bulldog family house used to be. Uh, they have turned it into somewhat of a memorial park. As you can see, there is a bench over there dedicated to the family. I mean, this really tells you how horrific this crime was that, you know, oftentimes when a crime as savage as this happens, they usually just sell the house to somebody else. So there will never be a house built on this land ever again. Okay, so we're going to head to the cemetery and we're going to talk a little bit more about how he was caught a little bit more into his mind and we're going to visit the Bulldog family grave. After setting the fire and Matthew takes off on his two hour drive back to his apartment, Bill Huntington, who was the employee of the Baldukes, He's at the flag shop and he gets a call from one of the Bold Duke's neighbors saying, hey, I just called 911. You might want to let Chris or Carol know that I think their house is on fire. Well, he calls Chris and Carol. Their phones are not answering. By the time the fire department gets to the scene and puts out the fire, they quickly discovered that this isn't just any house fire. Uh, this is a murder scene. They see three people on the floor. They see blood all over the walls, all over the carpet, everywhere. You get the crime scene investigators and detectives of the Old Orchard Police Department. They're not used to really any murders, much less a triple murder. So... They contact the Maine State Police Department to help with the investigation. So they come, they start processing the scene, looking for fingerprints, looking for clues. They quickly discovered that this fire was caused via a gasoline can. It had three spots where Matthew poured the gasoline in different areas of the house to set the fire. And quickly, by the dog park, they find Carol's Toyota 4Runner. And as soon as the detectives opened the door to it, they quickly seen that there were red stains on the, on the seat, on the floor rest, which they are going to quickly surmise that it looked like blood. So they towed the 4Runner to the Maine State Police Crime Lab to process. Now... They start talking to neighbors and they say, yeah, they have a son. His name is Matthew. He lives up two hours away. He's going to the university. Uh, they quickly go to his apartment around 10 o'clock at night. One of the detectives is talking to him and notices that he has several small cuts on his hands. Okay, that's a very uh, telling sign. We don't always walk around with small cuts in our hands so one of the detectives asks him 
how did you get the cuts on your hand? He says, oh, I was cutting a piece of steak. I guess the steak got away from him. So they quickly take DNA from him. I believe they did a mouth swab. They take photos of the cuts and they didn't take him into custody then, but they did have a couple police officers keep a 24 hour surveillance on him. Like this guy is not getting out of our sight. So over the weekend, come to find out after the blood is tested versus Matthew's DNA, it comes back that that is his DNA, that is his blood in his mother's car. They go back to his apartment, they take him down to the station and they say, listen, we know you killed your parents and your brother. You got cuts all over your hands. You got DNA all over your mother's car. He quickly confesses, I killed, I killed him. He explained the matter of which he killed him, saying that he basically lied in wait for each one of them. As they came home, he would use the stun gun, knock them down on the ground, and then start stabbing them repeatedly over and over. And as I stated before, they're asking him, well, why did you do it? And he said, well, when my stepdad came out as being gay, he was going to leave my mother. And I didn't know how she was going to be able to function without him. So I decided to kill everybody. Absolutely does not make sense to me at all. And then you also have him being very, very upset about them not funding his little uh, European vacation. Normally, if something happens in the family where a divorce occurs, instead of killing your mother, you're probably going to maybe take a semester or two off from school, move back into the family home, get a job, and help your mother out with the bills. So he was quickly arrested. He was charged with three counts of first degree murder. And also he was charged with the arson. So he goes to court. I guess he did the taxpayers and his family a favor by not going through it. some arduous trial where you have to relive the events and testimony and what have you. And he just quickly pled guilty to, to the aforementioned crimes and he was sentenced to life in prison. No chance of parole whatsoever. And you know, you had some of Matthew's family who were absolutely shocked that he could do this. Not necessarily that they were defending him. They were just at a loss for words. He never exhibited any signs that he could commit any kind of a crime such as this. He was just a, a loving son and a loving brother. Our hearts still ache with sorrow the secret tears still flow for what it meant to lose you no one will ever know <sighs> would you look at that they even buried the dog together with them You know, the closure that people and the family members will seek in this murder will never become a fact because when you 
agreed, when Matthew agreed to take the deal, he never had to explain himself on what was going through his mind. This was nothing but a premeditated murder because Matthew, he bought the stun gun and the knife about two or three weeks before the crime was committed. And when they conducted a search warrant of his apartment, what did they find in his backpack? Well, of course, a stun gun and knife covered in blood. You truly, truly never know what people are capable of. And he didn't want to get a job to save up the money to pay for his own damn vacation. So now instead of him having dreams of going back to Africa, going back to Europe, hell, maybe you want to travel all over the world and donate your time and, and, and help people in poor countries like rebuild their houses. He could have done all that. He could have done all that. He could have said, you know what? School ain't for me. And let me tell you something. I know a lot of kids out there, they're going to school and you know what? They're forced to go to school by their family members. Hey, maybe school's not for you. A sick, depraved mind couldn't just say, you know what? Yeah, school ain't for me. I'm just going to get a regular job. I'll save up and then I'll just go hit the road. And now he'll never, ever get the opportunity to do that ever again because the only backpacking he's going to do is from his jail cell to the mess hall and then to the shower. And these three people, their lives are lost. He even stabbed the dog. Before even reading this story, if I would have known better, I would have just guessed that his childhood was just traumatic and, but no. And even when you watch interviews with this clown, there's really no definitive answer to kill your stepdad because he's gay. Who cares? Rest in peace to the Bulldogs, including Spike. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.